All right, I'll I'll kick it off. Hold on. Oh, he's taking his jacket off. David likes a good prop. <laughs> Needs a good steam or iron, nice. but otherwise we'll let it pass. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the Fort Worth Lab, and I get to kick it off. Um, I've had a goal for a number of years that envisions a group of employees working at a corporate level that combines data analytics, budgeting, or how we allocate our scarce resources, and public policy analysis, all with the idea of answering the question for you, city council, and our citizens, and our community, how are we making Fort Worth a better place? In our organization, we have a large number of plans. We collect a lot of data. We have a large operating and capital budget, and we measure a lot of activities. I think there is magic, though, when you combine all of that and then have a bunch of curious people that ask public policy questions like, has the increase in spending in street lights and pavement markings made Fort Worth a safer place? And has traffic and pedestrian, pedestrian accidents gone down? Or we've added a number of civilian response positions in police to handle lower priority activity. How has that improved the availability of time for patrol officers? Or how can we improve the 911 system from the time the caller calls us to the time the response is by their side? And it is also about looking into the future, like how will artificial intelligence, drones, robotics affect service delivery and how we deliver services in the city of Fort Worth? In the past, we've had a department, it was been named budget management, budget and research, performance and budget, and most recently planning and data analytics. I asked Mark McDaniel, Mark McDaniel to look at where we are, look at where we need to be, and then tell us how we're going to get there. So we're making the recommendation, of, and we're calling it Fort Worth Lab, and Mark's going to describe what that means. I think it's a great visual, though, right? It is about exploration. It's about learning. It's about analysis. It's about cause and effect. And most importantly, it's about making Fort Worth a better place. Not only today, but tomorrow, next week, next year, next decade, and the generation that follows. So this is our idea of how do we take all of what we already produce, which is plans, data, measurements, and turn it into useful information for you, our city council, and our community. Mark, Dr. Mark, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Cook. So um, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. It's a pleasure to be in front of you after three months being here and talking to a lot of folks here on the ground in Fort Worth and also talking to a lot of my colleagues around the nation um, that are part of the, my network in uh, my previous life and uh, a lot of the different associations uh, that have also helped to contribute to this, and you'll see that as we proceed through the slides. Mark, apologies to interrupt you, but I'd like for you to introduce for those watching and those maybe that know who you are and your background and why you're so critical for this role and oh, how David you, somehow suckered you into it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mayor. So Mark McDaniel, um, been in uh, city management for 35 years, uh, managed cities 8,000 population up to 1.3 uh, million uh, with, uh, with Dallas. Um, and then I got the opportunity to come here to Fort Worth after speaking with David when I was recruiting to fill this position that I'm filling right now on an interim basis. And so uh, my, my career has built, been built mostly on city management, but also with a, an emphasis on uh, performance improvement and, and budgeting and fiscal analysis. Thank you. Thank you. 
So we always like to tie uh, back to our vision and mission whenever we begin a new journey. And our vision, as you can see here, does mention that we'll be the most livable and best managed city in the country. And so Fort Worth Lab uh, definitely um, has that vision in mind. And then when we look at our mission, it's also about working together to build a strong community. And uh, the way we have structured and formatted the Fort Worth Lab is definitely um, what makes it different, perhaps, than other efforts and a lot of collaboration, particularly among um, all departments and all staff. We always like to also remind ourselves as staff as we begin a, a new effort about the strategic vision priorities that you all established uh, here recently, uh, as you see on the slide here, all three of them supporting the quality of life. So what's next, as we've talked about, it's the Fort Worth Lab. And so it's building municipal systems cap capabilities to explore, analyze, and learn from data. And the why is really important to talk about as, uh, as well. So why, why would we do this? I think uh, Mr. Cook really articulated it well. But it's also enhanced and meaningful public engagement. Uh, that, that's the fuel for this uh, to make it work. Uh, collaboration among departments, as I mentioned uh, just a moment ago, and also making sure that we have our eye on the ball in terms of the council's strategic vision priorities. And then better tools to develop and use data analytics. So you'll see in a moment where we're bringing in some resources to do that. And then looking at our performance trends so that we can begin to what we call bend the curve in a favorable direction as we see trends develop over time. Uh, also in tra enhance transparency and accountability so that we, we own uh, the work that we're doing. And then just better informed consideration uh, for both long and short term decisions. So making that happen, as has been mentioned, the planning and data analytics will be transformed to become the Fort Worth Lab through the realignment and collaboration of people, tools, and systems. Before I uh, go into uh, the driver, which is really the public engagement and, and the hearing from the council and other stakeholders, I want to talk a little bit about leadership, which will make sure that this is sustainable over time. So uh, the whole effort reports up through to the city manager. And we want to introduce a corporate advisory board. So if you think about Fort Worth being a, really a multi-billion dollar corporation with several thousand employees, I think we can learn some things from the private sector, uh, which I have done in, in, my, in a prior life, uh, for them to advise us on best practices in the private sector and how we could apply those in the public sector. Now, we know, we know that government can't necessarily be run like a business, but we do know that we can borrow best practices from the private sector and use them, and you'll see some of those in a moment. So the idea here is that uh, Mr. Cook would, would appoint uh, C-suite executives uh, from large, some of the largest employers in Fort Worth to serve on this board. They'd meet at least twice a year to hear about what we're doing and make suggestions about how we might uh, further improve uh, the way that we're run. As, a, as an organization. The other really critical piece here is the Staff Leadership Steering Committee. We'll be meeting once a month, and we'll be talking about the deployment of these strategies, the pace that we're, we're proceeding at, um, and just all the strategies involved to make sure that it's going to work. Um, and also so that they own it and they have a stake, a stake in it. Then the Chief Transformation Officer uh, will report up and run the, the lab on a day-to-day -day basis. So you don't see this title a lot in public sector. You will see it in private sector. Um, and we're, we're pleased to introduce it here uh, to, to really be accountable for making sure all this works. So on the left-hand side, this is really the fuel that drives the engine, is all that feedback mechanism, whether it's the council telling us what your key priorities are and those driving budget decisions and the way we do business on um, business planning, or it's the community with our traditional surveys, which we still do, and we're about to launch another one here in a, a while. Um, or the traditional town hall meetings, right? Uh, those are still a part of this. Now, if you think about budget, comprehensive planning, the bond program, those are all public engagement um, efforts. We want to make sure that those dovetail and that they're working together and that we are um, kind of cross-pollinating information for those efforts and doing it all out of the lab. And so uh, we'll also be using a lot more robust um, platforms, software platforms, to get um, feedback from people that perhaps we don't hear from all the time. Uh, and, and that will then complement the citizen surveys. So I'm going to start going into each of these components. Uh, first of all, we, talk, we start with strategic foresight and future threats. 
So this is uh, working with an outside firm uh, with the Alliance for Innovation. Uh, Fort Worth is actually a member of this organization. So we already get some of their studies. And this is looking out, as uh, uh, the city manager mentioned, 30, 50 years from now, what does service look like, not just in the U.S., but around the world, and how service delivery um, could be uh, provided for, for, for in the future. And then talking to a lot of stakeholders, maybe inside the organization, even outside the organization here in Fort Worth, and really discussing what if, you know, what if we could do this, and how would that work, and what sort of technology is out there now? So there's a, it's a group of futurists um, that can uh, look at uh, a variety of topics, and we're toying with what that first one might be. I would envision doing about two of these a year, and so we've looked at a number of service areas that we might want to um, really hone in on. And so, you know, we do a lot of studies now, like the matrix studies and the gateway study, or city gate studies. But that's really about the here and now. It's not about what does that service delivery look like 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, and how can we position ourselves now to be able to really take advantage uh, of those new technologies, uh, whether that's artificial intelligence or just a new way of doing things. The next piece is data analytics. We do this in the organization. Um, some of our better departments at this, are, I would say, are probably police and perhaps uh, transportation and public works, uh, experimenting with a lot of tools. So we're, we're contracting with a firm called Delivery Associates. This is, a, this is a firm actually out of the UK, but they have a lot of presence in the US. Um, and so they provide us tools, uh, and then they train us how to use those tools, and it's kind of like turn, uh, teaching us how to fish, right? So after they're gone, then we can still use those tools. And what we, what we anticipate here is a multi-phased program where we're taking uh, a few departments a year and walking them through the use of these tools, helping to train, train them in the use of these tools, um, and then you'll see that next with priority-based budgeting as well. So the first three departments that we're focusing on are police, transportation, and public works, and we want to use an internal service, um, so we're going to use human resources. Uh, to help them to analyze the data and use these new tools in different ways that we've never used before. Uh, it'll also uh, really start looking at things like predictive analytics uh, and uh, transportation and public works is already experimenting with, with, with some of this now uh, about where they need to focus their maintenance dollars or where they might anticipate uh, you know, street lights going out, that sort of thing. The next piece is priority-based budgeting, and this is moving away from that traditional line item approach where we're really um, talking about putting things in front of the council, uh, decision packages that are about, is, does this meet your priority and to what degree does it meet your priority? So we can rank each of those decision packages in that way. So when we ask the departments to submit their budget, they're doing them in alignment with these priorities. And so we'll have a firm, Resource X, help us with that. Again, teaching us how to do it so that we don't, we don't have to have them on, on, on board all the time. Uh, they're kind of a lab partner, so to speak, for now. And so they'll help us prioritize and allocate mapping those costs back to the strategic priorities. So the listening sessions that we had with all of you uh, to interpret for us what the, what the priorities meant, uh, that information will then go into this, help us to to prioritize each of these in that way. Uh, the next piece is what we already do in terms of comprehensive planning. Um, and we're, as you all are very well aware, we're about to launch on a very public effort. We haven't done that in about 20 years as far as the extent to which we want to engage the public in developing the next comprehensive plan. Uh, that RFP is already out on the street, um, and we uh, will ask the council to help select um, a service provider midsummer and then work will likely begin in the fall. So this is what um, Eric and his team has traditionally done, but, but we're going to go beyond that in this next block. So we want to take on the coordination of the bond program, still you know, in orchestration with uh, William and his group and Dana and her, her group and others uh, on helping to develop that and, and uh, provide all the input that they normally do. But then... We also want to develop a strategic investment plan. So it's taking all the plans that we have today, not just the comprehensive plan, but also area development plans, the village plans, uh, TIF plans, PID plans, water and sewer plans, layering all that together, and then making recommendations around where do we get the most bang for our buck and be strategic about the investment of our infrastructure. 
Uh, so Eric and his group, along with the budget team, will be doing that. And I'm so excited about this because we're finally marrying the comprehensive planning function with the budgeting function, particularly on the capital side. Uh, we're also going to be, and I think you're aware of this because it was an IR earlier, uh, look at using um, some uh, tools for fiscal analysis around land use decisions. So when you have a zoning case or land use change, you have some idea about fiscal impacts. And so we're, we're looking at uh, providing that information as well out of Eric's group. Uh, this next piece uh, is strategic planning at the department level. We'll call it Fort Worth STAT. Uh, this is a program that you'll find in the nation's largest, some of the nation's largest cities, uh, where it's a really kind of a quick um, review of every department in the city at least twice a year when there's not, you know, you know, you're not fighting a fire in some emergency and it's not the budget process. So you can really focus on what's happening. And this is where you'll have their SWOT analysis, their goals that align back up to this council's strategic priorities. You'll also have actions to achieve those goals and what's the dollar amount that might be associated with that so that when we're putting the budget together, we've already, we don't even already know about what the departments might be bringing to us because we've talked about it in these Fort Worth stat meetings or we call them turn the curve or bend the curve meetings. And there'll be statistics, statistics in there uh, that we'll be able to, to monitor over time and look at those trends. And so the new lab will help the departments to develop the, uh, these strategic plans or the Fort Worth stat plans. Uh, the next piece is sunrise reviews. Uh, this is a, a kind of a, a knockoff, if you will, on sunset reviews. I've done sunset reviews in a prior life. They're negative. You never really eliminate whole programs. You just really evaluate them and see what can work. you could do better. And so we're calling them sunrise reviews because it's about new beginnings and looking at the way we do business and how can we do it differently to make it even better. And so we'll identify opportunities for these, maybe two, three a year that we'll conduct um, through the Fort Worth stat meetings and also um, through the data analytics um, and other uh, ways of getting this information up through uh, either the leadership or from employees making suggestions even. Um, the next piece is Lean Six Sigma and the parallel organization. Uh, Fort Worth has a history of the use of Lean Six Sigma. I know that we've all heard the staff stand up here and talk about whether it's in Lauren's group or um, uh, you know, another group, uh, development services, how they're using Lean Six Sigma to improve processes uh, with the employees who are closest to the issues, understanding them better, conducting the analysis. And so this is really taking it to a whole other level and deploying it in a whole different way and supporting those efforts that are already happening today, but going beyond that and it really enhancing that program across the organization. So let's just say, for example, uh, we take two cohorts through the process. Maybe there's 10 to 15 of that are in that process per year. We teach them how to do Lean Six Sigma, but they start their training with a project. It's not they go through all their training and, okay, now you have a project. They start with the project from the very beginning, so they're starting to make an impact from the very beginning with their project. Um, once you get to kind of a critical mass with the number of employees that have gone through this program, the mindset on looking at ways things are done um, really changes. They start looking at it in different ways and say, what if we did this? And why do we still do it this way? Um, and so it really begins to take on a life of its own and, and move the organization, not just the leadership pulling the organization from the top, but people in the, from the middle of the organization or even the bottom pushing it up and forward um, uh, in an, and all in the same direction. And that's what I mean when I talk about that parallel organization where you've got this group of people that are really uh, developing some um, energy in the organization to move all in that same direction. And the last piece um, is, a, the, is a first in the nation. We're working with the Government Finance Officers Association of America to deploy a fellowship program around rethinking budgeting. And so their initiative on budgeting is, is really, it's the, the two differences that I, that, um, major differences are, number one, uh, over the top public engagement so that you really understand what your citizens want. And number two um, would be the whole idea of priority-based budgeting so that it's not just that line item budgeting. It's really about funding those things that are most important to you as a community. Um, and so we'll bring in some fellows each year. GFOA will, will provide a curriculum 
Uh, and these will be a one-year fellow, and hopefully some of these individuals will come on full-time with us, not just in the lab, but every department's got budget staff. And so this would be a great pipeline for some real talent and some energy um, around that in the organization. So the, here's the implementation. Uh, we've already, uh, we're already bringing on strategic partners uh, to help us with this that I mentioned earlier, whether that's Delivery Associates or Alliance for Innovation or Resource X. Um, this position that I'm holding now, I'll start recruiting for my replacement th that'll fill the position full time uh, in May. And then we're realigning our staff to ma make sure that we are able to, to pull this off. Um, and then we'll uh, phase in those, each of these components over time. And then here's, again, a timeline in terms of uh, what I just described, and we'll kind of layer in the, the proposed budget process. Uh, 